Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show. This is episode number 75 of Pop Culturally Deprived, and today we're going to be talking about Deadpool 2 on your, well, that's just lazy writing podcast. I'm Mandy Kay. And, oh, God, there's someone inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> So today's episode is a little bit different because I am different. in the same room as Matthew and it's really freaking me out that there's somebody watching me. I'm just staring without blinking, guys. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Matthew Vos. Um, so we are doing a uh, special one. This isn't a one-off. This is a normal episode, but a kind of bonus. Um, yeah. Mandy is over in the UK, so we went and saw a recent film. We're going to be releasing this early to our wonderful, amazing patrons because this is our next stretch goal funding tier level reward thing, whatever they're called on Patreon. Um, what what we would like to do if we hit that point is to be able to do a monthly show where we go and see something recent out um, and do a bonus episode of PCD, but about something that's at the cinema as it comes out. Because it would be really nice to start watching movies where people don't say, oh my god, you haven't seen that yet? <laughs> a year and a half in and I still get that. Yeah. You do also still get offended when we think you haven't seen a movie, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I have many layers, okay? <laughs> um, so we're watching Deadpool 2. Um, Mandy, how come we've not seen Deadpool 2 before? <laughs> uh, because it came out last week. <laughs> or the week before, maybe. Yeah. Oh god, we have no history. Uh. Deadpool 2, it came out a couple of weeks ago, and it's been successful, and people are in it. Uh, it and was, it's the sequel to it, Deadpool. It is the sequel. it still stars Ryan Reynolds. Yes. Um, directed by David Leach, director of other films such as John Wick and Atomic Blonde. Oh, it's the Atomic Blonde one. Okay. I have seen neither of those. Um, and it has been fairly successful. I think people have raved about it quite well uh, as a good film. I hadn't heard anything bad about it, hmm. but I also have been avoiding reading anything about it because I did not want to be spoiled. Okay. So is this the point we say we aren't going to be spoiling this? There's a good chance we might talk about plot points. Oh, yeah. If you haven't seen it, you probably don't want to listen to us talk about it because we're going to spoil it. Yeah. 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 We go into detail on the films that we talk about. So. Yes, we yes, do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, do you want to give us a brief synopsis? Oh, my synopsis is going to spoil things, though. It's I arrived in the UK. It took many hours to get here. I'm so tired and I got dragged to the cinema. <laughs> it's about Deadpool doing Deadpool things. That's the best I can do, I think. Deadpool does Deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really shouldn't be working through these questions. How did you watch the film? <laughs> well, you know, we bought a ticket to the movie theater. We went in, found our seat. Watched all the movie trailers before it, mm -hmm. and then we watched the film oh. and stayed through all of the end credits when there was no end credit scene. Yeah, there was a fun song at the end yes. about Juggernaut. So, do you know what I was expecting there? There was a a meme of Juggernaut, which was a very early meme. So by the point they had Juggernaut in X Men Three, um, he says the line that is his meme. Okay, which is like, "I'm the Juggernaut, bitch." Oh, okay. It was I think he says something like that in a cartoon, probably not quite so offensively. Right. Um, but it then became a cart uh, uh, like comic okay. to be shared. They then put that in X Men Three. They didn't do it here. Interesting. Weird. I'm not super familiar with the character. Okay. I think I I've seen X Men Three, but I don't remember mm. much about it because wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. It was he was played by Vinnie Jones. I don't know who that is. Oh, uh, English footballer. Who was in other movies that you've probably not seen? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, known as being thuggish as a footballer, a hard man, and then he went and played a hard man in films. Okay. That kind of that makes yeah. sense. Um, what did you think of Deadpool two? I liked it a lot more than I expected to. Mm. I went into it thinking, okay, so I loved Deadpool. Okay. Initially, I thought, again, I didn't want to really watch it to start with, mm -hmm. and I had to be like in just the right mood to finally sit down and watch it, and then okay. I was captivated and thought it was the most brilliant thing I'd ever seen. Okay. That's overselling it a little bit, <laughs> but I thought it was brilliant for yeah. a superhero movie um, because it's so different. And then this one I was afraid was going to be more of the same, and mm -hmm. I wasn't familiar with any of the villains, and so I just kept thinking, I don't want to see Deadpool just get chopped up into pieces over and over again. Yep. It's kind of what I thought it would be. Yeah. Um, and that's not what it was. So okay. it was really good. Okay. I thought it was a bit 
the same again. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was good to have the the supplementary cast supporting him now because they brought, I think, a lot of the interesting humor and interplay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like a lot of the humor was was let's just do him doing the same stuff again. It, his character definitely was mm. kind of the same, but I think Cable was completely different than I expected. Yeah. I thought Cable was the villain of mm-hmm. the film based on the way they sold it and the way they marketed it. Yeah. And he was actually the most, he had the most depth Mm -hmm. of the characters. Yeah. And I really was surprised. Mm. It was nice. And Domino is my new favorite superhero. She was pretty good. She was fantastic. (laughs) If they don't bring her back for Deadpool 3, Mm. we're going to have a problem. I I would imagine the next one's probably an X-Force movie. So maybe. So X-Force is actually a thing? Mm. Okay. Yeah. See, I don't know these things. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, the the first Deadpool I was very su- pleased with because I was really excited for it but really worried they would diminish the character in some way mm-hmm. particularly because they kind of tried it before with the Wolverine film right. um, which obviously got lampooned in this and in the first Deadpool um, and that had failed so abysmally mm-hmm. I was like oh, they're not going to go far enough they went as far as they should have done and this one they did, they did the same mm-hmm. so that was good I was quite pleased with the writing that he it opens with him blowing himself up and it's like, right. okay, clearly there's a tragedy there, and it's probably to do with Marina Bak- Um I was quite pleased that it wasn't the whole film leading up to that point, and that was the Act 3 right. kind of finale, mm-hmm. which I, I had a feeling it might end up being. But it was, actually, we got there really, really quickly, and then the movie moved on from there. Yeah. Which is nice, because... They set it up to be as if that were the third act, and it mm. was like 15 minutes later, we're yeah. there again. Great. So that was nice, um, even though I didn't like it. <laughs> Oh. Uh, I'm having a hard time deciding if I think they fridged her or not. Because I kind of feel like they did. But at mm-hmm. the same time, the plot of this movie had nothing to do with her or her death. Mm. It was just kind of what led him to this place. Right. So I'm not sure how I feel about that. Okay. Have you seen the Kick-Ass movies? No. Okay. So first one of them, I think, ends up with him getting with the girl he wants to get with. Mm-hmm. Not to spoil it, because it's not that great um but the second one she's now not really on the scene anymore and he's uh, getting on with someone else Mm -hmm. and that's a fairly standard thing for sequels that are not uh the whole team back together again the first girl is now suddenly not on the scene um and there is a a new love interest in there and i i kind of wondered if this was going to be the same thing with her dying so early but actually no she is still a part of this Mm -hmm. Um, i think we we still have to see what happens from those end credit moments yeah, I'm not sure if we're supposed to take that as actually part of the mm. movie. Like, did this universe change? Yeah. Or are they going to ignore it in the next one? Mm. I don't know. It, it, it was quite surprising because there was a whole thing in the first one of the character, I think, in the comics gets powers. And there was an implication that she'd been in the chamber that might give her powers. Mm-hmm. So, and then it was like, oh, no, no, she's still just a person and right. now she's dead. Yeah. And she's not part of this team. So, well, my big concern with him them showing him saving her Mm. is if he saves her at that point, then doesn't that set off a chain of events that will prevent him from ever meeting Russell in the first place? Yeah. Which means Russell is still going to kill Cable's family Mm -hmm. and so on and so on. Like, is it just, I need to accept it and not think about time travel. (laughs) I I think the thing is that time travel for you is like the conversation we had on Bill and Ted. So for me, it's kind of like time is immutable because Mm -hmm. that's, I came to, Time travel through Bill and Ted. That's my first real memory of it. For you, I think, because you've come through Doctor Who and things can change and right. you don't mess with it and so on. But he did change it, though. I mean, in both instances, mm. the past did change. Mm. So time can't be immutable. So if that can change, then it should have a chain reaction. Yeah, maybe. It should. Possibly. Okay, I'm thinking about it too much. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had, Like you say, we had lots of extra characters in there now. So Domino... Did you watch The Flash this season? I'm only like 10 episodes in, okay. so I haven't gotten very far. Okay. The, there is a character with that power in The Flash. Oh, okay. Um, which is played more in a kind of gambling luck. She wins at stuff and that's... But then it does end up with... <gasps> yes, I did see that one because mm. she was the villain of that yes. episode, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and she's had a couple of moments in the rest of the season as well. Okay. And it was like, oh, hey, and they're doing it in this as well. Right. Okay. But I, I suspect that is Domino is an established character. Mm. Maybe. No perhaps. idea. <laughs> um, but it was done very nicely because it wasn't just she's basically invulnerable because everything goes her way. 
She right. still fights. She still tries to do things. But when it needs to, it falls her mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Um, well, and, and she's smart enough to get out of the way if somebody's shooting at her or yeah. if a car is going to come at her. Mm. Um, I enjoyed that. That was something I noticed. I feel like they did that very intentionally. Mm-hmm. And it was good. Yeah, because you've got to give the character some sort of direction and drive. It can't just be, she yeah. just keeps... Um, the only one that really bothered me was when she decided to let Lady Luck drive the truck. <laughs> while it was turning a corner. Yeah. You know... Which that I, was a stretch. Yeah. I get that the brakes are out, but how is it still accelerating? Were they going downhill? Uh, Maybe? Vancouver's not that steep. Yeah, I don't really. know. <laughs> <laughs> and this was, again, this was a very Vancouver-looking Vancouver. Whatever the city was meant to be. Okay. Because um, there were points about, I'm like, I'm sure I've seen Barry racing down that in the flash. And I'm sure I've seen that building in Supergirl. Oh, that's funny. I, I didn't even <laughs> notice. And then at the end, you were like, we have to see if it was filmed mm. in Vancouver. I'm sure it was. And yeah. Yeah, and it was. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I did notice they had a lot of Canada jokes in it. Yeah. Is Ryan Reynolds Canadian? He is. He's oh, very okay. Canadian. He's very Canadian. Yeah, yeah. And Celine Dion singing the main song. And right. yeah. <sighs> wow. I am just like not observant. I just don't pick up on <laughs> stuff like that. At least not the first time. Not observant when it's America's hat. So. Kate and Jen, I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, they've got Justin Trudeau. Like, I want to go to Canada. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the main plot. So we had a couple of elements to it. We had Russell wanting vengeance on these guys, who I think it was just torture. It wasn't like an experimentation, Weapon X, or what they did to Deadpool in the last movie. This was just people who believe mutants are evil. Were, okay, here's a, I have a question um, about that, though. Hmm. Were they just doing it to inflict pain, or did he think that this machine could somehow cure the mutant gene? I got the impression in the end it was just inflicting pain. Okay. It was, they are evil, and we're trying to oh, banish the demon or something, maybe, but... Okay. It's, yeah. It, it was strange, the way it was presented, with the whole, by my hand, you will be healed mm-hmm. kind of thing. Mm. So I didn't know, like, are they trying to, like use pain to burn it out of them maybe Maybe. but they didn't go into detail about that it was just we know he's a bad guy they're all bad guys because pain with children yeah but in this universe it's funny to not go into that detail because so often it is about what is the experiment that's being done on them or turning them into a wolverine or a deadpool Mm -hmm. or the the experiment whatever it was or or the pain was not a thing it was just oh these are evil dudes i'm going to assume they're evil dudes from the very beginning and then kill them all yeah that's what we do yeah it was interesting to me whenever they revealed that domino had grown up there mm. because she just very casually said i i grew up here or i was tortured here like it she yeah it was just a one-off line mm. and it just is what it is yeah and you don't usually get that usually that would be a plot point mm. that they're trying to show all of a sudden she wants vengeance too yeah and they didn't do that they kept her character very like on mission. Yeah. I nice. thinking about it, I think the point for her was rescuing the other kids who were there. Mm-hmm. But that didn't come across. It was fighting the dudes that was her main thing. It was thing. mostly fighting the dudes, yeah. Perhaps there could have been a line of I want to get stop other people from going through what I went through. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. They didn't lean quite heavily enough maybe. Right. Other than her actually getting them out yeah. on the bus. Yes. That just Which miraculously nice. appeared. That was very nice. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to use it, use yeah. it big. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, what, what did you think about Russell, a Mm. child being the quote unquote villain? Reminiscent of a couple of other stories, if I'm honest. It's definitely put me in mind of Looper. If you've seen Looper. You haven't seen Looper. And, uh, one of the subplots on this season, Supergirl, if I'm honest, which again, it put me in mind of other stuff set in Vancouver, I think, which is why it was all coming to mind. Um... I'm surprised there was no reference to Russell from Up. Oh. Because the kid in <laughs> Up is called Russell and is that sort of Very, stature as yes, well. Yes. Um, I really quite liked it. I, I like this thing about the kind of determinism of what he's going to grow up into mm-hmm. and the decisions he makes now will impact things in the future and uh, fighting for the moral centre of the kid. Mm-hmm. I quite liked it. Um, but you can only do that with a time travel story. Yes. Did you... Did you think that they would save him, or did you think that Cable was going to have to kill him? I thought they'd save him up until the bit where he blasts them out of the building and they hide under the slide. And at that point, I was like, actually, I think they might have to kill this guy. I I think he's gone actually that far, but they just kept it right at that edge of Mm -hmm. he's not quite done enough yet. But there was a point now I'm like, 
oh, I think they're now going to have to switch. And it's the way I would have expected it to go is um, Deadpool didn't save him, but did the right thing in fighting for him. Something like that sacrifice or whatever it ended up being. Um, but yeah, I'm, I I always expected they save him right up until that end point, but then they did save him anyway. Right. Yeah. You? Did you? Oh, I was conflicted the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Like my brain says he's a kid. They're not going to kill the kid. Yeah. Like they just, if they killed the kid, I feel like people would be in an uproar. Yeah. But they wrote it so well that, like you, it really, at that moment, you feel like, holy shit, this kid is really going to die. They can't save him. Yeah. Um, so that was surprising because I also didn't understand until the moment the bullet hit Deadpool what he was doing. Right. I thought okay. he was trying to push Cable out of the way, and that's mm. why he was jumping, not jumping in front of Russell. Okay. Uh, so when the bullet hit him, I was like, oh. <gasps> my god he's got the collar oh my god <laughs> like all these things were going on in yeah. my head at the same time um so it was good yeah i feel i feel like that moment was trying to lean on the same effect they used for the bullet hitting vanessa yes. vanessa earlier in the piece mm -hmm. um it wasn't the same spot yeah but it didn't and and the fact that he threw himself in front of the bullet inst instead of trying to stop the bullet mm -hmm. Again, I don't feel it quite, quite came across, quite landed the point. It's only now I'm thinking back on it mm -hmm. that it's like, oh yeah, there, there's a parallel between those two moments, um, which was which was nicely done, and particularly when you then had uh, Cable going back in time, which I get because Cable is the one who killed Deadpool, so he did do a bad thing, so he's sort of saving himself to do this, okay, to stop him from dying. Yeah, hmm. oh, I don't know. I agree with Deadpool. He did it for Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> totally did it just to save Deadpool. I think he I, liked him at that point. Yeah. <laughs> I was expecting the line to be something like, no, I did it because I, I couldn't go back to my wife and child and live with myself for what I did. So I had to change it. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Um, speaking of Cable, there was one Thanos reference. I had an expect. There was just one bit where he just calls him Thanos randomly. Oh, did he? Yeah. And I was expecting all the way through some clicking of the fingers joke, something <laughs> about gloves. Like... Okay. Actual late, not not necessarily laboured jokes, but deep Thanos jokes. Huh. There was nothing. I I missed that one. Mm. Like it completely went over my head, or I just didn't hear it. Right. I don't know. But yeah, I expected much more than they actually gave us in the end. It was it was quite surprising. He, I know that is it Josh or James? Josh. Josh. Josh, Josh Roland mm -hmm. plays Thanos. And Cable. Mm -hmm. But the CGI for Thanos was so extensive that he's not recognizable as Josh Brolin. Yeah, true. And so watching this, I wasn't thinking, oh, it's Thanos. Okay. It was just, it's this new character mm. who is kind of weird and has a strange moral center. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which suits the Deadpool side of the universe. I it think. does. Mm. Because he, you really think he is the villain right up until he comes to ask Deadpool for help. Yeah. And then he still has that questionable moral center because he is there to kill a child. Yeah. To, but to save someone. Yeah. To save so many people. Right. Mm. It's it's not black and white. Mm -hmm. And that's good. Yeah. Because in, I mean, even in the Avengers movies or the Marvel movies, it's mostly black and white. You've got yeah. the good guys and the bad guys. Yeah. The villains are very shouty, angry. Yes. After their power. So I, I appreciate how different Deadpool is mm. from all of the other franchises because it's an association with Marvel. It's not Marvel studios, right? Uh, no. So like, technically it's, these aren't, this MCU. is Fox. So this is technically the X-Men universe. Okay. Um, which is why we could get that cameo that we had in yeah, the movie. Yeah. My little cameo. Um, just finishing off the, the only time I thought, Oh yes, this is the guy who plays Thanos is when he was torturing TJ Miller and he does a whole talking thing about pain. And it's so slow and quiet. I was like, this sounds like Thanos talking about okay. being in war and so on. Okay. Just it, it, that was the one time it was the rest of it exactly like you. I was like, oh, this is a different character. It's quite mm -hmm. interesting. It's, yeah. 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 Minor cameo in the middle. Yeah. Basically every X-Men. I want to go and find the still of that and see like, is it Halle Berry? Is it the modern X-Men? Is it because it was James McAvoy and mm -hmm. Nicholas Holt, I think, who plays Beast. But... um. 
I don't I recognized Beast mm. the character mm. and then I was like oh and then I like my eye went to James McAvoy yeah. and I was like oh my gosh I see what they're doing and then it was over and yeah so I couldn't see everybody in the background <laughs> and I really I want to know like who they got to do that yeah um because it was there was another cameo that I wanted to remember and now I can't mm. it'll come to me maybe well there was the Wolverine moment at the end mm-hmm. in the end credits mm-hmm. but that was actually from the Wolverine film. Right. Don't go and watch the Wolverine film. I won't. It's don't bad. worry. They, they do get better. Like, Logan is a very good film. I have seen Logan. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, that first one is pretty poor. That does remind me of something I wanted to ask, cool. though. So, Logan takes place in the future. Mm-hmm. This movie is not supposed to, yet it takes place after Logan died. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I don't know why. It's weird and it kind of like made me stop for a minute. Yeah. But just because I know the the rivalry between Wolverine and Deadpool mm-hmm. is so great. Yeah. Like, and I only know that by reputation. Obviously, right. I haven't read the comics okay. or anything, but it was hilarious mm-hmm. to watch him playing with that music box. Yeah. At the beginning. But then my, my brain started, you know how I am with time. My brain started turning yeah. and I was like, well, this doesn't make sense. Yeah. Not quite. It's It's not a future where Logan... The event has happened. It's right. a world where Logan the film has happened. Deadpool lives outside. He understands oh, he's in a movie. Okay, he understands right. he's in a comic or a video game or whatever the interaction you're having with him is. And so that fourth wall break is, I know this is a written film and you're watching okay. me and we're like, and I'm telling, that's how I'm telling this story. Okay. And you are in a universe where Logan happened, where Patrick Stewart and James McAvoy are the mm-hmm. Professor X's. Okay. So... Oh, yeah, I that's like the reference. The, the wheelchair yeah. smells like Patrick oh, that's Stewart. Good. That yeah. was fantastic. Just the fact he's going around, I'm like, he's in the wheelchair. He's going to be in the wheelchair. He's in the wheelchair. <laughs> that's very nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Did some good stuff. So comparing it to the first Deadpool mm-hmm. film, um, do you think this is a, the sequel that first one deserves? You like the first one so much. Is this what you want of a sequel, or is it? Would you want it more or different? No, I think this was this was a really good sequel for it because you do get the reason Deadpool was so good was because of Deadpool. Mm. And you still get that version of Deadpool mm-hmm. in Deadpool 2. You mm-hmm. still got all the jokes, you still got all of the crudeness and you know, baby body parts. <laughs> baby legs, yeah. <laughs> you know, so all of the things that make Deadpool Deadpool mm-hmm. were still in this movie, mm. but you also, now they've expanded the world mm. because they did give us those supporting characters. And I think if they hadn't done that, it would have been really disappointing because yep. it would have been just the same thing. And they've already done that once, you know, yep. it's not brilliant the second time. Um, and so I think, yeah, I, I don't know what else they could have done that would have made me enjoy Okay. This because it was also really nice to see him not on a revenge quest, mm-hmm. even though they set it up to be that with Vanessa dying and him wanting to go after yeah. the people who killed her. But since that took us into the actual plot of the movie, which was about him saving a yeah. child rather than trying to find vengeance like Cable was doing, and I think that was where it needed to go. It was nicely different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the one. I think I agree. Absolutely. This this is a sequel that kind of deserves to exist. It's not mm-hmm. just another. My disappointment with Guardians 2 was, I don't feel this does anything to this world. Right. It just is another story with them. Mm-hmm. This, I think, like you say, new characters, blah, blah, blah. I feel like they toned back his makeup quite a bit. Yes. I feel like the first one, they made him ugly. They like, did. Which, to Ryan Reynolds, you have to work at, because he's a very pretty man. But... In this one, he looked just a little kind of covered in prosthetic, but not really that much. I wonder if it's because they showed him so much more without his mask on in this yeah. movie. And so the time required to do that. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe mm. maybe it's toxic to be in like that much makeup for as Possibly. long as he would need to be. Yeah, yeah. Virginia Hay on Farscape. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Um but he was definitely outside of the mask a lot more in this one. Right. Which was surprising. True. Yeah. Um, but he wasn't as scary to look at. Hmm. When he stepped through the thing at the very end and was Ryan Reynolds, I was like, oh, yeah, that's not what he actually looks like. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> oh, I got teary-eyed at that point. I yeah. cannot believe Deadpool 2 got me teary-eyed, but it did in two places, both at the end. <sighs> I'm such a sucker for romance. Yeah. So it, he it, was reunited with her, and it was wonderful, and he was healed because he was dead, but they mm-hmm. were together. And it was so nice. And I was like trying not to cry. I was like, if I cry, Matthew's never going to let me live it down. (laughs) 
Uh, and oh, then Catherine was crying too. <laughs> I could see that happening. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, when he went back, you know, it, I just it was nice. Mm. It was nice. nice. It's emotional. Yeah. I'm silly. Yeah. yeah. The the film did good writing around that relationship again, which. For me, that was one of the best bits about that first one was it felt like a very genuine relationship. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he was so heartbroken over getting ill mm -hmm. and what it meant and trying to find a way out of it and because he loved her. And it, it just felt so much more realistic than some of the other relationships we see in the MCU and the X-Men world. And yeah. yeah, It was a shame we didn't get more of it almost. Yes. Mm. Um, his reaction to her death surprised me a little bit. Mm -hmm. He wasn't as broken as I expected him to be. Mm. Um, but that could be just because they gave him stuff to do immediately. Yeah, like, it was a very quick healing. Yeah, he mm. didn't have time to wallow. Yeah. I guess. And I think part of me wanted to see that a little bit. Mm. Wow, I am a terrible person. <laughs> Let's watch Ryan Reynolds in more pain. I was really surprised they went straight into, in, in a good way, but I was really surprised they went straight into the conversation about having children. Mm -hmm. And it was, yes, really want to have kids, let's do this. Rather than it being a, what does it mean to be a father? And I have to get over my own daddy issues because I'm a Marvel character. And right. it was just into, brilliant, let's do this thing. Mm -hmm. And it was, again, a very mature sort of grown-up relationship. They'd obviously had a conversation at some point, And this was the, right. now we're, we're both ready. Right. It was nicely done. It was very nicely done until mm. they killed her in the well, same yeah. conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Five minutes later. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. And then we go into that title sequence. Um, which might be my sort of favorite thing. I it particularly was enjoyed great. that. Yeah, it was better than the first one. Well, really, I think so. Oh, I like that first one. I mean, I liked it, mm. but this one, I like it better. better. Uh, how many James Bond films have you seen? Any? Mm, one. Okay, because that was basically a James Bond opening sequence. Okay, with him doing some of the James Bond silliness that you get right. in the James Bond opening sequence. Okay, but then with all the funny words coming mm -hmm. out of the screen at you and so on. But that was what they were pastiching there. Okay. So yeah, this, I wouldn't have picked up on that. Okay. This is perhaps the other conversation to have about this. This film was quite filled with movie references. Are there any movie references that stood out to you? <laughs> oh, why would you ask me that? I'm tired, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> there were. There, there were several where I thought, oh, I need to remember that. And now <laughs> it's just gone. It's just I'm sure if you start telling me some, I'll be like, oh, yeah. That one was great. <laughs> Well, it had lots of, obviously, lots of Avengers and MCU type mm -hmm. re actual references and references to Batman and the Justice League and the DC Universe. Oh, yeah. He's, he said, you're really dark. Are you sure you're not a DC <laughs> in the DC Universe? Nice. He did say that. Which was in the trailer, but was still, oh, uh, it yeah. is still a very good line. Mm -hmm. uh, very appropriate. And again, it's great because they make these jokes. Like when the first Spider-Man came out, they made jokes about Superman. Okay. Uh, when, he, when he tries to throw the webbies up, up and away web. <laughs> and, and all of it, like, yeah, yeah. make it, anyway, um, we had a great basic, basic instinct moment with the mm. baby legs. I haven't seen that it, was, so. That was very silly. Um, so I can't remember any now, but I kept thinking, seeing it like, oh, that's really good because they're doing that, oh, they're doing that, oh, they're doing that. Yeah. And. There were a lot. Mm. Um, and they kind of came at you quick. Yeah. But there was so much going on and I knew I wanted to remember like the important bits to talk about. Yep. And, so I and, and I couldn't take notes. No. Like, ordinarily, I would have been typing away and I would have noted all of them. But can't do that when you're no. in theater. And you can't even sit here and Google stuff now. It's true. Yeah. Um, and this would be one of the kind of exciting things about doing more modern or, you know, films as they come out. Because as we're doing Pop Culture Deprived for the old films, you're starting to see... I think we've had a few films the last few weeks where there have been references that you've gone, oh, yeah, that was a reference to Pulp Fiction, which I've now seen because, right. yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. Godfather nice. jokes and stuff. I am learning. <laughs> My pop culture education is actually benefiting me now. Yay. <laughs> um, any favorite moments, favorite lines, favorite performances? Oh, Domino is my favorite character. Mm. I know I had favorite bits, but they're percolating in my head somewhere. Do we think the treatment of women's okay in this? Uh, you know, we actually had more women. I think so. I mean, because the women that we had, it was just our main characters. It was Vanessa and Domino, um, teenage Negasonic Warhead. Her girlfriend was slightly problematic. Yukio. Mm. Yes. Just because she legitimately served no purpose other than to 
I, I don't want to say legitimize, but to show that the other character is queer, mm. which is great. Mm -hmm. But they could have done more with her girlfriend. Yeah. Instead of just having her be a funny, I like Wade. Yeah. Kind of character. Very stereotypical yeah. Japanese girl who shows she's quirky by having color in her hair. Yes. Which <laughs> is definitely a trope by this point. Having seen Pacific Rim, mm -hmm. definitely a trope. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. They did give her one good moment, though, mm -hmm. um, against Juggernaut. Mm -hmm. Right when she came up with her chains of lightning. Yeah, electricity chains. Yeah. Awesome. That was fantastic, but she didn't get to say it. Like, I think the only words she said were, Hi, Wade, and yeah, I, like, I like this guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, all the other women that I can remember were strong. Mm pertinent characters yeah so i think i agree good uh what do we think of our the the x-force team who didn't make it oh my gosh <laughs> i was so excited when terry cruz turned up i love him on brooklyn 99 so i was like oh terry cruz he's amazing oh <laughs> yeah i didn't expect them all to die <laughs> especially after watching the trailer because they made such a big deal out of right? peter yeah. You know, and showing him, well, I just saw the ad, so I thought it'd be fun. And then showing him jumping out of the plane. And so you're thinking, oh, Deadpool's really doing something different mm. here. And then they all die. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, didn't expect it at all. And they made such light of it. Mm. Like, I mean, he did go back and save them, which was nice. Yeah. Um. Oh, no. He saved Peter. No, he saved more than Peter, didn't he? I, I or was it just so, Peter? I don't think so, because he only tells Peter to turn around. So Terry oh. Crews goes into the bar still. One goes into a chipper. In the middle of a street. Uh, one goes into an electricity pylon. One goes into a helicopter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think I just assumed that if he went back to save Peter, he would save the others too. Maybe it's implied. Mm. I like to think the best. Mm. Yeah. I think the Vanisher was probably my favorite of those folks. Okay. <laughs> because you don't get to see him until that one moment. Who played him? I was gonna because I, I felt like that was a cameo. No, it was. Catherine absolutely had it bang on. It was Brad Pitt. It was Brad Pitt. It was Brad Pitt. Okay, I, I was thinking, he looks really familiar, but we only saw his face for a split second. Yeah. And as Zeitgeist, we had Bill Skarsgård. Yes. Who was Pennywise the Clown mm -hmm. in the recent It. <laughs> yeah, they, they were good fun. I, I quite I quite liked that as the joke of getting a team together, but then they didn't last. Right. But it was... Lamp posted a do I mean lamp post? Lamp shaded. <laughs> I'm not sure what lamp posted is. <laughs> lamp shaded a bit. Um just by the fact they went so quickly into the heist. There was no sort of team training bonding montage. Right. Which I would have expected if this was to be a genuine team. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, his relationship with Domino seemed to just happen. Mm. Like it was just there. We didn't yeah. get to see them becoming friends or becoming invested in each other. It was mm -hmm. just She's there. She said she was part of the team, so she's going to do what she can. Yep. She's the only woman here, so we can't be too mean to her. Right. She might go away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but other than that, I thought it was nice because by not showing all of that stuff, we have extra time mm. to do the meat of the story that they yeah. were trying to tell. Yeah. Which was nice. Which that, that the actual heist on the convoy was really good. Mm -hmm. That was an excellent action sequence. It, it's up there with the the hobbits escaping um, in the the not the hobbits, the dwarves escaping the barrels. Oh yeah, in the Hobbit movies, yes. that, which is which is one of my favorite action sequences. It's so well done. I think this is up there because okay. it was just so silly all the way through, but still had some legitimately good action moments. Mm -hmm. um, I really like Deadpool saying, "I've got it." No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, and then just like falling. <laughs> Yeah, there was enough of that of him not quite being mm -hmm. the superhero he wants to be, but then also being able to do stuff. It, there was a, a slight thing, I don't know whether this is so much for, in the first one, that he kind of seems to have super strength now. Yes, I was going to ask, mm. is that part of, is that new? Like, is that part of whatever this mutant changed for I, him? I thought he just healed. I, yeah, I think he thought he was just a kind of Wolverine healing and, because Wolverine doesn't necessarily have super strength, he just is strong because he's quite buff, but right. Deadpool, I didn't think, had that. But it was like, oh, I can bend this bar around mm -hmm. a dude. and Yeah, mm. when when they put the collar on him and he just kind of became this really ugly dude dying of cancer, <laughs> yeah. he clearly had no strength. Mm. He still had fighting ability. 
because he did, you know, despite feeling like crap because he's dying of cancer, he did try to save Russell. Yeah. Um, and he was still fighting through the pain. Mm. But then I noticed there were a lot of super strength things that he did in this one. And yeah. I couldn't remember if we knew that he had super strength or is that just they wanted to make it more cool. So they did that. Yeah. Because even Cable, I know he's got the, the Winter Soldier arm, but there was a bit where like Cable was thrown through a car. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought it was humor other than that, so. Well, and I was surprised that he survived the um, when the Juggernaut got out mm. and, like, threw everybody. And yeah. his, his, the first thing, when he wakes up, his arm starts moving. Um, I was surprised he was actually still alive at that point, because if yeah. he was just human, he wouldn't be. You'd expect so. Yeah. Um, but I'm confused about who Cable is and what he is, because they don't explain that at all. No. Like, he's, like, half cyborg, kind of. Some sort of merc dude? Yeah. I I would be interested to know more about him, especially since I like him now. Yeah. He's not this terrible <laughs> villain who wants to kill children. Um, But, yeah. But is this a, a sign of uh, the Marvel Universe in general getting better at its villains? Maybe. The fact they can do something. This, this was quite nuanced for the silly end of the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the spectrum. Um, yeah, it mm. was. Compared to Ronan the Accuser or uh, the first couple of Iron Man films. Mm-hmm. In fact, all three Iron Man films. I like the third Iron Man film the best. <laughs> and I'm the only person in the world who does. So it's fine. <laughs> I think it was... It, the, the great thing about Deadpool is he's not formulaic. Yes. and That is definitely true. Th- that's just so different in the mm. world of superhero movies. and I mean, in any genre of movie. Like, you find what works and then you just keep doing that. With yep. new characters, new settings, you know, but it's still the same. All the Marvel movies are the same, except a little bit. <laughs> Infinity War was slightly different, but that's because it was a part one. It, yeah, it's only half a movie. Let's right. be honest. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I think for Deadpool to not be formulaic is what draws me into it. Right. Then I want to know more about them, and they're not telling us. Like yeah. I don't know where Colossus came from. I don't know where Teenage Negasonic Warhead came mm-hmm. from. She just is. <laughs> So, hmm. yeah. So, it's only been two years since the first Deadpool film came out. Has it been two it, years? According to this, it was a 2016 American superhero film based on the Marvel Comics character. Okay. Um, he says, reading Wikipedia. <laughs> um, so, it's only been two two years. I, I would normally say, like, what's the third in this franchise look like? Expecting the third to be, like, wrapping up a decade of story. A bit like Iron Man 3 was actually... Right. We, and because, admittedly, that was we'd seen the character in a couple of other films mm-hmm. as well, but... How do we wrap up this story? How do we move them on somewhere? I feel like if we said there's going to be a 2020 or 2021 Deadpool 3, it probably would be another story, mm-hmm. not necessarily a wrap up of the Deadpool franchise. Right. But what would you want to see in a Deadpool 3? Um, I want to see the team because this movie very clearly built a team, mm-hmm. um, especially with that hero team shot at the end. <laughs> right. um, I want to see them saving people. Doing good things. Okay. Not necessarily saving the world, because that's not what Deadpool does. Mm. He stops bad guys, but Mm. he doesn't... Like, his goal, it's not like the Avengers. So, I don't know what I would want them to do, but... I want Deadpool doing Deadpool things supported by people who love him. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Because you do have to... To allow the the level of violence in Deadpool. Mm -hmm. And it is really damn violent. Oh, yeah. Um, to have that level of violence, you have to have people who are genuinely very threatening to something I think Deadpool has an interest in. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, so I'm not sure I'd want Marina back back around to be the, the sort of right. hub of it again. Yeah. I think the interesting thing about this movie, though, is that most of the really violent violence mm-hmm. wasn't from any of our core characters. It was from... The the fight at the prison, the icebox, or yeah. the the guards. Oh, Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it didn't really come like it didn't come from Cable because they couldn't do that because mm. he ended up being a good guy. Yeah, it didn't come from Russell because he's a kid. And while those were the two main, God, I hate Bang. to say villains, but yeah, they were yeah, the bad yeah, guys. Yeah. They weren't the ones that where the violence was centered. It mm. was the beginning, the the people who killed Vanessa, mm-hmm. and he went and killed them all. And then it was in that fight 
when Cable came through. Yeah. And Cable was the instigator of that fight. Mm-hmm. But all he did was inside a riot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so then it ended up being prisoners versus guards. And that's when you got a lot of, like, arms being chopped off hmm. and stuff like that. Because I feel like a lot of the actual violence, the sort of gore violence, is Deadpool. And, and Himself, yeah, yeah. Doing the slicing people's heads and... His, the back break scene. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That was awful. <laughs> Like I had to stop looking at it. Oh really? Yes. Oh. Um, no, it was it was wrong. That one and when his head was turned around backwards were the two <laughs> that I had the the hardest time with with Deadpool and his personal violence. Mm. It's a very good costume because you can do basically all of it with CG, mm-hmm. and and you can just have Ryan Reynolds recording his voiceover and make him appear to say whatever. Mm-hmm. You don't actually have to lip sync or do ADR that way. It's very cleverly done. It is. Um, yeah, but I feel like he's the one who does a lot of the like actual when we got knives going into heads and mm-hmm. things, and that and it's all him. Which is why I just I'm like if you have the villain and you do that to the villain, you've got to have a villain who is genuinely villainous. Um, <laughs> Ovs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We did have the scene right before. Um, oh, what am I thinking? The the guy Eric Skarsgård before he mm-hmm. died in the wood chipper. He threw up his acid all over yeah, the other yeah. guy and his arm disintegrated <laughs> and it was just like hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite graphic. Yeah. That was pretty graphic. Mm. And Deadpool being torn in half was very graphic. Yeah. Didn't expect that. Yeah. That was quite an extreme moment. Because I had no idea what was the, the monster was going to be. Yeah. I, I, I Yeah. No idea. Didn't I've... expect Juggernaut. Because um, I didn't know Juggernaut was that big. The only right. thing I was thinking was like, is it like the Hulk or the Abomination? Have they got that character? Or there was a Hulk reference. Oh, was to there? The Juggernaut. Yeah, he did. Oh, the song. He did, he did the lullaby. Yes. Hey, big guy, the sun's going down. Sun's getting real low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sun's getting real low. That's what it was. Yeah, he did that to the Juggernaut, and obviously no effect. But that yeah. was funny. I wish that they had taken the helmet off of Juggernaut because I want it. I don't know anything about the character, mm-hmm. so to me, he looked like a metal Mister Potato Head. Yeah. So he wasn't super interesting to me. Mm. And did you hear the reference about his brother reading his mind? Oh, which, did he say brother? Yeah. Which implies it's Professor X. Okay. I thought he said Cerebro, not brother, but oh, I could, could have missed it. Could have been, maybe. Mm. But uh, it would be interesting if he was related yeah. to Patrick Stewart. I don't know enough about the character. Yeah. The um, information on Wikipedia apparently, because I, I want to know who did the voice of that because I couldn't quite place mm-hmm. it. Ryan Reynolds. Really? <laughs> okay. Picking up another paycheck. What a yeah. mine. <laughs> He's getting around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other favorites? Any other bits we want to reference? Oh. Uh, I'm sure I'll, as soon as we stop recording, I'm going to remember all these things that I wanted to say. But no, I think everybody should just go see it. Mm. I think anybody who enjoyed Deadpool is going to really enjoy this one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I think sure. it stands up as a, a good sequel in this universe. And even though I know it's impossible, I would love to see Deadpool show up in the MCU. Yeah. Like, I understand it's impossible because he lives in the world where the MCU exists. Right now. <laughs> um, But, I mean, he, he did try to clean up some of the timelines. So. Mm-hmm. If if Disney buy Fox, the, I, uh, which I suspect they want to do before Infinity War Part 2. Okay. I reckon that reset will be merging all these universes. Fantastic Four, X-Men, Deadpool, and the MCU. Interesting. Mm. Oh, that would be fascinating. Yeah, because they've already got that link with Sony to have mm-hmm. the Spider-Man movies join in, so... Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. That w- it would be nice, okay. but... Yeah, although I don't the know. Deal is like, ongoing. Can you imagine Tony Stark and Deadpool together? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's um, Deadpool and Spider-Man that I think are two of the biggest sort of connections in the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, that actually spend time together and like are friends, or not necessarily friends, but work together. So, yeah, he would be a really bad influence on Tom Holland. It so would be excellent. Oh, I like that <laughs> so much. <laughs> oh, he's so sweet. He does not need to be corrupted by Deadpool. Yeah. No. I mean, because even before he was Deadpool, Wade Wilson was pretty. There was some corruption there. I mean, he was doing good things, but he was doing them. To, in bad, I don't know. He's he's just he is not a good influence on people. No, no. I quite like the whole trainee thing with him trying to do good, and I feel there is 
something there about him really fighting his baser instincts or mm-hmm. something, but I also am not sure how much humour there is in it. Right. So without it becoming really samey. Yeah. So. Um, I think everybody reminding him that he was a trainee was really the funny part there. Very nice. It, yeah. it wasn't him. It was people's reaction to him mm. that was funny. But it was going to get old very fast. Yeah. So um, I'm kind of glad that he pulled out that gun and just started shooting people. Yeah. But <laughs> it got him sent to prison. So. But there, there was an implication that those dudes actually weren't that evil at that point. Turns out they were, so he was right. fine. We'll let him off for having killed a dude with no due process. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, so kind of, I don't know, morals in this movie, like, <sighs> police in this movie are weird. Mm. Because at the end, like, the fire department didn't show up. The no. cops didn't show up. There's this, <laughs> all of this fighting and fire and, like, buses being thrown. And yeah. nobody shows up. They just walk off at the end after like 30 minutes of this right? happening. So, yeah. Do you think in particularly the X-Men universe, they're like, oh, mutants are at it again. We're, we're going to give it half a day and just see if like it, it turns into a world ending supervillain. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Just because I was thinking this, this would be a really good universe to have a TV show about like an insurance company Mm. (laughs) or the people who have to come clean all of it up because that whole city got demolished Mm. throughout the course of this movie. Yeah. And in a smaller way, like I I, I would say, like I prefer a movie that does a smaller story that isn't just the world is in danger now. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying earlier, this is just him against a couple of dudes. So it's not. Right. Oh, like the last couple of X-Men films that have trashed huge amounts of cities. and Yeah, yeah. this one was just a truck trashing mm. a building or yeah. like a couple city blocks of parked cars. Yeah. But it was still Which a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Well, if you would like to join the conversation and tell us what you thought about Deadpool 2, you can use the hashtag PC Deprived on Twitter. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Eloquent Gushing. And you can find each of us on Twitter. I'm at Mandy K. And I'm at Matthew Vos. Pop Culture Deprived is 100% funded by listeners like you through Patreon. Anything you give gives access to exclusive content, outtakes, early episodes, and helps to support the network and develop new shows. If you want to find out more, please go to patreon.com slash eloquentgushing. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest news and announcements across the network, don't forget to subscribe to the weekly newsletter. You can find that on the homepage, eloquentgushing.com. And... I'll be back next week with another episode of Pop Culturally Deprived. No, you won't. Oh my gosh, no, I won't. We've I'll hit be the back hiatus. In- <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, next week, nobody's going to be here. So I will be back in July with another episode of Pop Culturally Deprived where we will talk about Dumb and Dumber with uh, some special guests. So until next time, I am Mandy Kay. And I hope the Academy is watching. <laughs> Pop Culturally Deprived is an Eloquent Gushing production. For more information, go to eloquentgushing.com or find us on Twitter at Eloquent Gushing.